welcome to Impact Thursday night. I'm Ken Turner, one of the ministers here at the Impact Ministry Center. Come visit us. We're just north of Atlanta. Uh, the information about Impact Ministry Center is on the, on the screen. So give us a call. Send us an email. Uh, we'll come to you. We've uh, actually gone around the world. We, got, we went to England year before last, so we'll come wherever we need to, to go. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that Thursday night is just a night, but this is your night. Every night's your night, Lord. We come and, Lord, I sense your presence in a different way tonight than I have in a while. I believe tonight is a night that you will separate. Sometimes we need to be separated from the things, from the people, from the world for a season, for a time. So Lord, I ask you to show us tonight through the teaching, through the preaching, through the words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy. Lord, we believe in your word and your word comes alive when we meet together in unity. Lord, let us be a Acts 1 church that we're in unity together here tonight. Let our hearts come together to worship you tonight. Because without you in the midst of everything, this is just another meeting. And Lord, I know that I'm not here, all the people here in the room, the people watching, we're not about just another meeting. We're desperate. But uh, we are mature believers in the room, Father. We come to f hear your word, to feed upon your words. Their life, their revelation, their strength. They bring wholeness to the body. So I pray for Fred already that he will partake of the word and feed us tonight the mature word, the strong meat of the word that we can digest the things that we need to go out of here. Lord, you're calling us higher and you're calling us into new places. It's not comfortable now, Lord, because you're stretching us, you're molding us, you're pushing us a little bit different. That's okay, Lord, keep doing it. Don't want to go back. Lord, I'm here to burn the bridges behind me. Lord, I want to go ahead and I believe everyone just about in the room that we're ready to go forward in your name. In the power and authority that you're going to, you've given us, Lord. I think some of us are just now realizing that authority. So, Lord, we worship you. We worship you in everything you do in our lives. But, Lord, I come to die tonight like we do just about every Thursday. Can I be honest with you? There, I get fed up with me. I mean, I'm, you know, I've been doing this over 40 years, and there's still a lot of selfishness. There's still a lot of flesh patterns that I like my way. I know none of y'all like that. Y'all are holier than I am, I'm sure. But I'm tired of me. You know, I really am. I, I don't, you know, I'm pretty honest up here. I, I, you know, there's things that still bother me. Still things that I have to rebuke and, you know, be honest, sometimes they don't get rebuked off of me. I, I have to really watch. And I'm not, nobody would know. I'm not talking about anything terrible, I don't think. No. But we need to be real with one another, people you can trust. I'm not saying everybody come up here and give a testimony of your sin. But the Lord's looking for a holy bride washed in the blood. This is the night to be set free into my place for you, says the Lord. I'm giving you revelation, spiritual revelation, things that you have not known. This is a new season, a new word coming forth. I've prepared most of you, all of you really for this time that you can go and do the things I've called you to do. This is a new breaking. It's almost like I see you as the, that cocoon that, that's hanging on that little bush and 
you've been kicking on that thing, the little caterpillar got up there and, and you've been in that cocoon and you've been waiting, Lord, where, where, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And you're kicking and all of a sudden the cocoon drops off and you spread your beautiful wings and you go and fly in the place of destiny for you. What a beautiful picture. Lord, we don't want just little butterfly wings tonight. Lord, we want eagle's wings. Amen. We're a gathering of the eagles here tonight that we can get ready to fly up higher in the currents, your currents, your breath. Choose us, Lord. We're here. Help us, Lord. We cry out. I cry out for this group. Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to see you. But Lord, make us invisible that we can go out and people see us. See you in us, not us, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is this okay? I'm, you know, uh, James Nichols did a, a teaching, it's really a preaching a few weeks ago. If you wasn't here, you ought to watch that. It was wonderful. And he, he basically dealt with Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, most of y'all. The way he taught about it, preached about it, was, was really good. I, but I thought about that after that. But I think that's who we are. I think that's who we are as groups. We're, we're speakers of Ezekiel 37. We're the breath of God. We're the voice of God. And I believe, I know God's going to breathe on us tonight. Uh, he's going to breathe again tonight. Would anybody like that over their life? over their family, over their children. Lord, I pray for all of us tonight that you breathe through the message. But right now, Lord, even now, over each one of the lives, I cast anything off of us that's not of you, Lord. I pray for each couple, each single person, Lord, each, each child, Father. I pray for all of our children, our grandchildren, our mates, Father. Whatever that we need to pray for, we lift them up, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. Put a fire back in them. Some of them have walked away, Father. They've lost the fire of God. Breathe on them with the fire of God. Help us, Lord. We need you. We're a needy bunch tonight, Lord, but we're, we're your warriors. All we need is for you to come and breathe again on us tonight. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit with power. God said, you can walk out of some of that stuff. All you have to do is walk. He said, you've been sitting and lying too long. Get up out of the bed. Get up out of the chair. Go and do the things I've told you to do. When you do one thing, I'll open up another thing. There's many things to do for my kingdom is at hand. Your stuff I will take care of if you'll trust me. Do the things I've called you to do. Anybody need to figure out what they need to do? Amen. Does anybody here tonight? God's going to show you tonight before you leave. After the message, through the message. And through some prophetic words tonight. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to turn it over to... Fred, I call him God. He speaks like. I've got to pray for one person. Is that okay? Where's Fred? Oh. What was your name again? Chrissa. Did I get that right? Can I pray for you? Thank you, Lord. I think I'm supposed to pray for you. Get by all of me. Hey, he's good. He's... Thank you, Father, for this life, Father. I thank you. I know she said she'd been here. And I remember, but it's been a while. Well, Lord, I see you dunking her in the spirit. Lord, she's a, a woman that walks with you and talks with you and knows you. But Lord, the, the battle's been heavy over the last few, really the last few years. I just see a picture of you being baptized with Jesus in the Jordan River. You're, he's baptized. He's laying you back in the water. 
and he's bringing you up and he's refreshing you. He said, give me seven days now to show you some things, to give you some things, to give you some words, some dreams. Do you dream? God said, I'm going to give you over the next seven days some new dreams. You've had some dreams recently. And God said, they're right. He said, you wrote them down. He said, I'm, I'm giving you my word, but I'm going to increase the word and I'll bring people around you to give you the interpretation of the word. We have dreams sometimes we don't understand them, but God, you, ha you are a seer. You see things. And God's going to, have, he's going to raise and have elevate that gift. This year is going to be a, a supernatural year for you and your family. You've had them before. This is different. He's cutting people away from you. I, I'm just telling you, you start walking as a seer or somebody, that, that you lose things. But you gain so much more. It, it, there's no, I mean, I'm not saying to walk out on people, but there's people that won't want to go where God's calling you to go. Uh, that's, a, that's a good word. It's a hard word. I'm just giving you, so when that happens, or when it has happened already, go with God. Let other people make their decisions for God. You can't, God's got some supernatural stuff. Uh, for you to speak to ladies. There's healing in your hands for ladies to, to, not just ladies, but there's some ladies that God sent mentor to help them, to show them the things you know. But over the January, February, March, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are going to increase, uh, amplify. Now, they're gifts. All of us have them. But some of us are more sensitive to those things. So be sensitive in every realm you walk in. Work, whatever you do, the home, the restaurant, God's going to give you revelation that's going to change people's life and destiny. Is that okay? You got something for me? You got a word for me? I'm looking, always looking for a word. Meredith's here. Oh, good gracious. I'm going to call. That's, thank you, Father. I'll, everybody can have that word right there. You want some of that word right there? That's, the word is in the room. I'm going to take some of that word because I want my gifts to, to go, not for the gifts, so I can go and pray for people and people will be touched and they'll hear from God. And then I can leave. I, you know, I had somebody before the service, I think it was you, you know, I gave her a word or something, I don't remember. I never remember words of, for people. I mean, some, that's not what this is about. We're here to call you out. All of you got gifts. Keep coming here and we'll pull them out of you. We'll pull them out. It's like getting your tonsils out. We'll get them out. But that's not a good way to put it, I don't guess. James will take that off. Thank you, Father. There's going to be, there's some, there's some words in the room tonight to, to really help people. So if you have to leave early, don't. Because uh, I, I, I see some words in some people. I really do, but I want the message here. Fred, get, you're getting ready. There he is. I keep losing him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You can come up this way. Thank you. Boy, the Spirit is here in a strong way. Y'all, I get saved again tonight. Ooh. You'll have to introduce yourself. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at introducing myself. <laughs> My name is Fred um, Rhymers, and I'm just a servant of the Lord that loves him. Um, I want to start off with a scripture tonight before we even get into the subject. Mark chapter 16. So let's start again. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, 
it will by no means hurt them. They will lay, in, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I feel burdened to talk to you tonight about walking in authority. You know, the scripture we just read was the last, uh, one of the last things that Jesus said. It was a commission. We know, we, we know that. And at the end of Matthew, Matthew also gives us very similar words for God's, Jesus' commission to us. But I want to paraphrase it just a little bit tonight. If you will just bear with me. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Do, therefore. See, God sent you to do. I may have a heart to go, but if I don't do something with what God has given me, it is emptiness. It avails nothing. In order to talk about this tonight, walking in authority, I want us to start at the very beginning. Because we need to understand what this means. And so I want us to go to Genesis. That's a good place to start, right? Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And then Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want us to understand what this means tonight. When God created man and woman out of the dust, we were not a living being. We were just nothing. But the moment that God breathed into us the breath of life, a miracle occurred. Something happened. And life entered this body. Also, he, of all the things God created, we are the only ones that are created in God's own image. Nothing else was created in God's own image except mankind. And then he gave us a command. He gave us the authority to rule over this earth, to subdue it and exercise dominion over it. <coughs> so what happened when, when God breathes life into us, a transfer took place. A transfer of life came into you. And in every single person, that can hear me tonight or over you too. A transfer of God's life entered your body. And so understand this. I am not God. But I have something of God inside of me. And it's because of that something of God inside of me that He has given me authority. Now I want to take a little rabbit trail here because when God created me into his own image, see, 
I believe in the creation story, but I also believe in evolution. But I do not believe that my forefathers came from an ape. See, God didn't create fish in his image, neither birds. He didn't create reptiles in his image, and he did not even create an orangutan in his image. And for anybody to believe that a reptile came from a fish, or that humans came from an ape, has no clue about the process of evolution. That was just, by the way, I, I just, I don't know why, but I felt the Lord wanted me to just throw that in there. Now, Romans chapter 8 says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who dwells in you. So to me, this is confirmation of what I just read in Genesis. Because a transfer took place when God breathed life into me. And now here in Romans, we hear or we can, we can see that God's Spirit dwells inside of me. And then we go to John 17, Jesus' prayer. It says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me. Now listen, and I in you, and then what does he say? That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Then Colossians chapter 2. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. Do you understand what the foundation is? The foundation is that God has imparted something to you so that not only that you can breathe and have life, but that you have life from God in you. And therefore, when God comes upon me to prophesy, I do so by the Spirit of God that's inside of me, and that prophetic word, it becomes a creative word. To come to pass. Because God's word will not return unto him void. Because it contains power and life. Not because I am God. I am not God. But it's because God who dwells in me. The spirit of God is inside of me. And therefore I have that authority and that ability to speak forth God's word and see a change come to pass. See, 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says that you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a priest. You know what is a priest? 
It's somebody that's in God's service full time. You are in God's service full time. And we need to understand this, that I am an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ at any given moment and every minute of the day. And he has empowered me. He has empowered me to speak on God's behalf as long as I hear him and speak what I only hear the Father say. So that takes us to part two. <clears throat> what does your ministry look like? Each one of us in this room and on YouTube have a ministry. See, ministry is not dependent upon age. It depends on the calling that God has given you and whether you rise to that calling. I remember, I, 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 I don't remember how old I was, but maybe 12. I'm from South Africa, for those that don't know. Lived in South Africa. And you need to understand, not everybody has a car in South Africa. A lot of people walk. I used to get on my bicycle, maybe 12 years old. I didn't know how to preach, but I had it in me, and I wanted to do something for the Lord. I'd get on my bicycle, and I'd ride down to where the people were walking, and I'd hand out gospel tracts. Then I preached my first message, I think, age 16. <laughs> I remember I asked somebody after the, the, that message, I said, how was it? And they kind of just looked at me. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, it's not age limited, is what I'm trying to tell you. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, He will put something inside of you to stand up for Him and make a difference. Luke chapter 9, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. Repeat that for me. Power and authority. What did he give you? Power and authority. That's right. And then Luke 10, Jesus said, I, have, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. A transfer. God transferred authority and power to you. Not only over certain, um, certain things, demonic spirits, but over all. Acts chapter 1. But you shall receive power. power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And sh you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Then Matthew. Matthew, uh, where are we? Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore. And what was my paraphrase? Do therefore. Finally, Luke chapter 7, verse 22. He replied to them, Go and report the things you have seen and heard. The blind receive their, they receive their sight. The lame walk. Those with skin diseases are healed. The deaf hear. The, the dead are raised and the poor are told the good news. So 
So I have to ask the question, why don't we see this happen every day in our ministry? And I'm going to attempt to give you an answer. See, it's all because of Johnny on the play field. Huh? It's all because of Johnny. Johnny, okay. On the playing field. <laughs> well, what does this have to do with our subject? Huh? We're wondering. <laughs> I'm wondering too. <laughs> Johnny and his friend. My dad will beat up your dad. So, Johnny believes in his dad. In fact, he is totally convinced of his dad's ability to beat up his friend's dad. So Johnny goes home that night and he commandeers his dad do you think for one moment that his dad immediately got in the car, drove over to Johnny's friend's house, and beat up his dad? No, I don't think so. Well, you know, if you, if you live in the redneck area, you never know. But <laughs> <laughs> But the chances are that it's not going to happen. And why is that? Because it has to do with the authority. <coughs> See, did Johnny have the authority to commandeer his dad? He did not have the authority. Now, Jesus experienced something similar. Do you remember he went into the, into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days. And during that time, Satan came to him, tempted him. It actually says that he, Satan tempted him during that whole time. But at the end of those 40 days, when he was really, really hungry, Satan came to him and tempted him and said, If you are the Son of God, why don't you turn the stone into bread? What happened here? See, the devil challenged Jesus to prove that what he said his dad was, who his dad was, that that is who he was. You understand? It would have been very easy for Jesus to say, well, I'm going to show you who my dad is. I'm going to turn this stone into a loaf of bread. But he did not. And the reason is because in John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, we find out that Jesus only said what he heard the Father say. And he only did what he saw the father do. See, Johnny on his playing field, if he had a close relationship like he ought to have, hearing his dad, if his dad was standing right beside him on that playing field, and his dad said to him, I got your back. You can tell this boy I'm going to beat up his dad then he can say so with authority. But unless his dad said that, he does not have the authority or the right to say that. Now, Psalm 78 verse 41 says, Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. 
I want us to understand something tonight. That you are able to tempt God. Many years ago, I served with Youth of the Mission in Africa. And I got it in my head that I was going to go home for the weekend. And it was later in the afternoon already. We lived about four hours drive away from where the Youth of the Mission base was. And so late that afternoon, I got into my pickup truck. For those that like pickup trucks, it was an El Camino. Uh, I started driving, driving home. And because I have a little bit of an adventurous spirit in me, I decided I'm going to take all the back roads. Some of them are dirt roads, not even paved. But I enjoyed the scenery. I enjoyed exploring. The thing is, I didn't really have enough gas to get home. But you see, I was at that time in full-time ministry. And I'm, darn it, I'm just going to believe God. He's going to provide. The problem with these back roads is there's not much traffic there. So I'm driving. And guess what? The needle on my gas tank is moving to the left. To, to the one that says enough. You know, the E. <laughs> They empty, right? But all along, I'm worshiping the Lord and I'm saying, Oh, I know you're going to provide for me. I know, I just know it. I just know it, man. God's going to provide. And the needle kept moving. And when it hit that E, my worship wasn't quite as strong anymore. <laughs> so I, I put my hand. Right there, so I couldn't see it. Just kept praising the Lord. Now it's starting to get dark. And would you know it? On a dirt road in Africa, coming around a bend, my car stopped. And I had to sleep there that night. And luckily a farmer helped me the next morning with some gas. I presumed that God would provide when I didn't have the rhema word that he would. So I tempted God in what I was doing. See, God gives you authority. But your authority needs to be based on your relationship. Do only what I see the Father do. And say only what I hear Him say. There are ways that we can limit the Holy Spirit. And I want to run through these. I don't know how quick, but we'll see. I want to run through these because I think they are important. Because as Christians, we need to understand that things don't happen automatically. God's grace, God's power, God's authority in our life is not cheap. One of the first things is the way we can limit the Holy Spirit is ascribing glory to ourselves instead of Him. Let me ask you a question tonight. When you pray for somebody to be healed, are you doing it for yourself? Or are you doing it for His kingdom? See, if God uses me in the healing ministry, then the danger is, I says, wow, look how God's using me. And you are robbing God from His glory. And you are ascribing to yourself glory instead of to Him. See, we have this example in Mark 
chapter 9. Um, it is chapter 9. Yep. Remember the, the boy that sometimes he was thrown into the fire and sometimes in the water? And the disciples could not cast out the demon? Now, let's think about this. What an awesome opportunity for evangelism. Here's this boy, and Jesus is about to cast out this demon. Wouldn't it be great if there were a lot of witnesses to this? But Jesus did the exact opposite. And it says in verse 25, when Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly coming together, he quickly cast out the demon. Is, is that what we would do? Wouldn't we say, wow, Lord, you missed it here. What an opportunity. But Jesus didn't seek the glory. The next thing that I want to talk about that will limit the Holy Spirit is reputation. And before I go to the next slide... Let me give you an example. I was visiting my brother in South Africa, and he took me to, to a dinner at a restaurant. It was me, him, and my nephew. We had a really nice dinner. And at the end of the dinner, we said, you know what? Let's get some dessert. And I wanted some dessert, but I was kind of stuffed up or stuffed already. I was full. And so, I didn't want a big dessert. And my eyes went to the kids' menu. And that's what I found on the kids' menu. Exactly that. It's called Chico the Clown. Now, I am fully aware that the server is probably going to wonder, what is this adult man going to... He's ordering Chico the Clown. <laughs> and what about my brother? And what about my nephew? Guess what I did? I ordered Chico the Clown. Because <laughs> I didn't care what the server thought. Or what my brother thought. Or what my nephew thought. I wanted a small dessert. And the child in me wanted the Chico the Clown. So that's what I got. As I told you before, I served with Youth of the Mission. And if you've heard this example before, please forgive me. But I, it's important to, to get the point across. The base was just outside of a small village, and well, I think it was a Saturday, because Saturdays we were off. Must have been a Saturday. I went to town. Um, I don't know what for, probably to buy a few things. And in town, there was a native, blind, sitting on the sidewalk, begging for money. And the Spirit of God rose up in me. And he said to me, I want you to go and yell at the top of your eyes. Uh, top of your voice. <laughs> wow, I got it right, didn't I? <laughs> at the top of your voice. Eyes open. See, last week we had a speaker here, and he taught us how to pray. And he was right. Jesus did not pray long prayers. He commanded the situation to happen, and it happened. Why? Because the Spirit of God is powerful in him. And he addressed the problem instead of praying a lengthy prayer. Right? And so that's what happened to me. 
in this town called Haman's Crawl. So the Spirit of God came on me and said, yell at the top of your voice, eyes open. Guess what I did? I started debating. See? Oh, what are the people going to think of me? What if nothing happens? Isn't this going to be a bad testimony? What if I heard wrong? See, and this is the sin of my reputation. I'm so concerned with my reputation. We're going to move on. See, First Thessalonians 2. But as we have been approved by God, to be entrusted with the gospel. Whew. God entrusted this to you. He's trusting you with this. He's called you. And he's put a ministry in your heart. He's trusting you with that. Even so we speak. Not as pleasing men. But God who tests our heart. <coughs> See, God will test your heart. Because God always looks at the heart. He doesn't look at whether I wear a jacket tonight. Or a tie. He doesn't look whether I drive a Mercedes Benz or a BMW. I had a preacher once say that it's a bad testimony to drive an old clunker. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. Because it doesn't matter whether you enter Jerusalem on a stallion or on a donkey. It only matters whether the, the, the power of God permeates in and through you to touch somebody's heart and life. God will test you to see whether there's an idol of pride in your heart or whether there's an idol of reputation or self-exaltation. Right after high school, I had the privilege to go to boot camp. You know what happens at boot camp? They break your spirit. Why do they do that? Because they want you, they want to get you to a place that when the sergeant says, I want you to defend that hill, and you fully know that it's going to be your life, that's going to, your blood that's going to be shed there that day, that you will obey without question. So at boot camp, your identity changes. And we have to have the identity of Christ in us. So that when he says go, that we will not debate. And say, but Lord, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it doesn't jive. It's, it doesn't fit. The third thing that will hinder the Holy Spirit in your ministry is love. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You see, your loyalty is first to Him. It's not to your calling. It's not to your ministry. But it is to a relationship. 
That's where your loyalty is. Because if I have perfect love, then I'm going to do whatever it takes because I love the Lord my God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and with all of my mind. Matthew 22 is a repeat of that example of the young boy that was thrown sometimes in the fire and sometimes into the water. And the people understood that Jesus was not there to be a man pleaser. They at least understood that much. But let me ask you this. At the end, it says, where are we? Okay, I've, I've, I've jumped ahead of myself here. Let's look at the last part of verse 21. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. What are the things that are God's? See, the coin had the emblem of Caesar on it. What is the emblem on your life? Is Christ emblazoned upon you? Because if it is, and it ought to be, then you belong to God. And you need to render to God what is God's, because you are His. The next one, number four. Faith. This will hinder the Holy Spirit in your ministry. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who's the father of us all. And then Romans, and we all know this word, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Then we're going to go to Matthew. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, said, uh, him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, and this is where I had jumped ahead of myself. So what happens at the end? The disciples come to Jesus and say, how come we couldn't cast out this demon? Well, in verse 17, he says, how, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? And then at the end it said, This kind only goes out by prayer and fasting. Now let me ask you something. Did Jesus pray and fast before he cast out that demon? It doesn't say that he did. So what's he talking about? The kind of faith to cast out demons. Okay. But you see, Jesus did fast and pray. He fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. And if you read the scriptures, you will find he would stay out sometimes all night praying. Or he'd be up early in the morning praying. See, that's where the fast and praying is. Come, is. We think that when we are faced with a situation that requires great faith, we better go start and fast and pray right now. No. You fast and pray in your closet at home before you get to that place. 
Because what you do in your closet at home becomes evident in your ministry in public. So you cannot afford in the times that we live in. What times are we living in? We're living in a times where suddenly we're about to see an amazing breakthrough in the spiritual realm. You cannot afford to wait till that situation presents itself. To then decide, I better go and fast and pray. You need to fast and pray every day now as the Lord leads you. And, and, and let me be candid with you. Just fasting TV is just not going to cut it. Just five minutes before breakfast is just not going to do it. A gentleman said to me the other day, he said, Fred, I know your heart is to pray. See, I find it really hard. It's a challenge to, for me to pray. Mm -hmm. And this is what I said to him. I said to him, it's work. Mm -hmm. See, I get up in the morning and go to work whether I feel like it or not. And I put in my six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours that day. And I reap the reward of my work. And there's a time and place when God will call you to prayer and you don't feel like it. But be assured that the reward is there when you obey Him at times like that. So faith. Faith equals trust. Faith also requires the study of the Word. You cannot minister if you do not know why you believe what you believe. You need to know why you believe what you believe. And the answer you're going to find by studying the Word of God. And as you do so, your, your faith is going to rise. You know, when I prepared this message, I had a hard time. But the more I just stuck with it, the more I sensed the Holy Spirit come upon me. And after a while, it became a glorious time as I discovered the truth of God revealed to me in His Word. So you need to put in the time studying the Word of God. And you have, faith does require prayer and fasting. Let me ask you something. What casts out perfect, what casts out fear? It's not perfect faith. It's perfect love. And why is that? 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who, has fear, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You see, faith equals trust. Because if I understand the love of God towards me, I will understand that he means me no harm. He never, ever, 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 ever means me harm. No one single time does God mean me harm. So when I say to the blind man, eyes be open, God means me no harm. When he calls you to do something out of the ordinary, he means you no harm because He loves you with an everlasting love that supersedes any love that man or woman can give you, which is corrupt, but God's love is never corrupt. What will hinder your 
The, what will limit the Holy Spirit in you? A lack of obedience. See, earlier I said to you that Jesus only said what he heard the Father say. And he only did what he saw the Father do. If you are not there in that intimate relationship, how will you ever hear that little voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right, or whenever you turn to the left, hearing that voice. Say, Lord, what are you saying? First Samuel 15 has a, says, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. We're coming to the end here. I want to give you another example about faith and obedience. For many years, I was part of an organization that had house churches. And each house church had a pastor, full time. Except that the pastor didn't get a salary. It was expected that he would live by faith. So you better know that God called you to this ministry. And God did. God provided for him all the time. God had laid it on my father's heart, on my dad's heart, to support him. And what my dad would do is, when money came in, he was self-employed. When money came in, he would set aside his tithe. And then when that tithe had accumulated to a good amount, he would just walk over to Pastor's house. Pastor lived about three blocks, city blocks away from us. And he would just walk, take a, take a stroll. And walk and give his tithe to the pastor. And so the time came, he opened his drawer, he took out the tithe money. And the Holy Spirit arrested him. And he said, uh-uh. It's not time. So my dad put the money back in the drawer. A couple of days went by and there was an unction in my dad's heart and said, I better give this to the pastor. He probably needs it. Took it out and the Holy Spirit said, no, not time. Another few days went by and suddenly in the middle of the day, out of the blue, the Holy Spirit said to my father, now take that money. And go give it to him. Took that money, took it to pastor's house. Now, it was a small village I grew up in. We didn't knock on doors. We, just, we didn't lock doors either. There was no fear. So my dad would just and walk right in without waiting. And pastor's wife met him in the hallway. And he handed her the tithe money. And tears started running down her cheeks. Because they had just had the last meal. And they had nothing more. And they had knelt down together. And asked God to provide. Whew. And just then. The Holy Spirit prompted my dad. Now's the time. See what a faith booster. What a faith booster for my dad. What a faith booster for my pastor. We need to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need to put ourselves in that place where our relationship with God is so intense that we don't second guess Him. Our love for the Father needs to be so great that we will not debate but that we will do. Finally, 
surrender. Can you imagine an angel appears to Mary and tells her the most impossible thing? Completely impossible. What? Dude, you don't understand how these things work. Pregnant? What? Totally impossible. And she questions, she says, how can this be? And what does Gabriel answer? He said, what with God, nothing will it be impossible. Let me tell you tonight, with God, nothing is impossible. If you are willing, to pay that price where you say, Lord, I put upon the altar my reputation. I put upon the altar my glory. I put upon the altar my lack of love. I put upon the altar, O oh Lord, the times that I doubt. I put upon the altar and I commit myself, I will not disobey. Then with God, nothing is impossible. Because your relationship with Him will be so close, so self, so self-absorbed in Him. You would be so absorbed in Him. That when He whispers behind you, this is the way. Go in this way. See that person there? Go speak healing into their, in, into their body. You see that man? You think he's going to spend the money on drink? I want you to give him some money. See, that's the difference between presuming that we know what God wants and hearing and only do what he told us to do. And, only, do, and only, only speak what he told us to say and only do what we see him do. Mary's response. Let it be to me according to your word. What is the calling that God has placed on your life? Can you say to him tonight, Lord, whatever you say, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. How do you walk in the authority of God? It's only one way, relationship. Relationship. Be married to the Lord Jesus. One last example, and then we're going to play a song. And I want us to just worship the Lord and give Him the glory. And then Ken is going to come up. In my subdivision, there's an old couple. And they like to walk. They walk maybe, I don't know, I've seen them walk at all times of the day. I would imagine three or four times a day they walk. He is a tall guy. And she's an itty-bitty short woman. But you know what I observed? They kind of look alike. <laughs> and when they walk, they kind of stumble in the same way. And when I drive by them and I wave at them, they wave in the same manner as each other. And they both have the same type of smile on their face. Now you guys have all heard, it, heard the saying that some people, when they are married long enough, they start to look like each other. Get married to the Lord Jesus. Get married to Him. You need to look like Him. 
His image needs to be stamped on you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Oh God. I want to be like you. I want to be like you. Create a hunger inside of each one of us, O oh Lord. In this room tonight, on YouTube, create a hunger that we will not be satisfied until we are like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 One, two. I'm Glenda. I'm married to James. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and how are you going to do if you can't go, right? <laughs> and I've had a number of years being married to James and a lot of stress and a lot of things and a couple of three really big, overwhelming health problems. And while we were listening to this, I saw someone asking the same question that I asked a long time ago. God, how can I do this? How can I go and do and be with this problem with my health? This last hurdle was all about um, a lot of skin problems that became so bad at some points in time, I felt like I looked like a leper. Mm. There were places on me that only my face didn't have red, scaly, itchy, um, just broken out, really bad places. And I couldn't even feel like I could go out anywhere without long sleeves and long pants. And, you know, sometimes if I did it anyway, people would look and kind of back away like, oh, so what's wrong with you? That was a diagnosis of a doctor called it psoriasis. I call it a curse. <laughs> and I had a family member last year said something to me because I've been crying out to God for the, about this for a long time. All of these other past health hurdles are gone. They're all dealt with. Amen. God supernaturally gave me answers. He did not give me prescriptions. I'm not telling you don't take your prescriptions. It might be your stepping stone. I don't know. <laughs> but here's the good news. That's not your answer. It might be a bridge. Who knows? Because I went to a lot of dermatologists, and they were all saying the same things. And I was recently talking to my husband about this I said honey how can I go and be the hands and feet of God with this this is so diabolically opposed to my testimony of healing because I really believe in in what God can do in just this fast yes well he said we're going to step up prayer about this I said I, I I'm with you let's do it well, now keep in mind these other diseases that had plagued me that are gone all had supernatural, super, and natural remedies. There were no prescriptions involved. Thank you. So I get to this last one, the, the big one, Elizabeth, right? <laughs> and I'm hating it. A family member last year said to me, I read in a book that I have, it's called The More Excellent Way, that that thing has to do with self-hatred. Like, what? And so I kind of objected to that because I thought, how in the world? I don't hate myself. But I decided in my quiet place that I would say to God, Lord, I may not know this in my conscious understanding, but somewhere underneath the radar, there has to be something connected to uh, what I don't love about what you love. Thank you. So I repented. I said, Father, I'm just sorry for hating what you love. I don't give myself permission anymore to hate what you love. And, and wherever those deep secret places are that 
that I hate myself, that I can't see it in my natural mind, please help me, Lord. Just take this. I'm putting it on the cross again today, over and over. Sometimes you know how healing doesn't come just like right then. Yes. And it takes a while. Yes. It percolates and has to work. Praise God for those things that happen right then. I just don't happen to be a candidate to normally get that. But you, you can. I've seen it. Thank you, Paul. So we've put all this time in prayer. And I'm walking through the grocery store. Is that still playing? I'm walking through the grocery store just thinking I wanted some tea. Anybody ever like to drink tea? I like tea. And I'm looking on the shelf. And I'm looking for this particular thing, and my eyes just go glued right to a detox spiced tea. Now, I know this sounds weird. Just hang in there with me a minute. And I just said, I know I'm supposed to drink this. Well, how many know that your skin is the biggest organ in your body? So I started drinking detox tea. I do those kind of detox things on a somewhat annual basis or whatever. Well, anyway, I, t I got bought the tea and I started drinking the tea and I drank more tea and I drank more and I drank more and all kinds of things started purging and purifying. And before I knew it, I looked in the mirror one day and I started skin and I thought oh my gosh no more ointments no more no more no more no more anything Thank you. I know I have old skin because I'm 66 and you get little dark spots now and then but do you see a bunch of red scaly things right there that was all over legs behind my ears everywhere it just wouldn't go away certain foods now would cause this to be such a mess. Certain cheeses, certain breads, certain anything. I was racking my brain day and night. What can I leave out of my diet today because I don't want this to be worse. Yeah. But here's the deal. The Lord has a remedy in this earth for everything. Everything. Mine happened to be <laughs> detox tea. To begin to cleanse me from the inside out. Yes. I'd already done my part by saying, Lord, I don't want to hate what you hate, or what you love. I'm so yes. sorry for hating what you love, and please help me. And, and then he, he, what I'm saying to you is he will send you to the place of your healing. Yes, Lord. And I felt like I was supposed to tell somebody in here, You've cried out for the same thing. God, how can I do what I'm supposed to do when I'm in this condition? Yes. And I heard that little song that came up, and I said, oh, my gosh, there's another person in this room who's struggling with maybe on YouTube. I don't know. Maybe it's not in this room. But I want you to know that he is faithful. <laughs> he is faithful. Day after day after day, I chased God over this thing. And he wants to drop that remedy to you. Don't be surprised if it's something very unorthodox from what you thought. And if you're dependent on having to make those appointments and do what those doctors said, just just do what you're supposed to do. I'm not telling anybody to go throw your prescriptions in the toilet for heaven's sake. But I just want you to know, he's faithful. He's faithful. And he has every remedy in this earth. Now, would you believe that just a bunch of dumb little yellow weeds that you go out in your yard and you try so hard to get rid of is the exact thing that dandelion tea, dandelions are what's the basic product to that tea. And we try to kill them and dig them up and blow them we don't want those seeds going anywhere, do we? <laughs> but dandelion is the main ingredient in this particular detox tea, which was the remedy. He's got a remedy in the earth for you. Seek it out. Seek it out. Seek it out. Be in prayer. Be encouraged. Don't stop 
asking him, where's my answer, Lord? Because if you give up, you know, you can't go any further when you give up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You want to pray for the people? I'll pray. Yes, I will. <laughs> Father, I so love you. I celebrate that right now I am psoriasis free. <laughs> That thing has been a curse in my family for generations for a long time. And I'm, I'm just so thankful that I can be the one to say, look what he did for me. <laughs> and now, Lord, I pray that faith would arise, that the enemy be scattered. And whoever is struggling with their answer for their health in this room or on this YouTube tonight, somebody saying, God, how can I do this unless you heal me? Yes. And so, Father, I believe that your word has everything we need. You put everything we need in this earth somewhere to give us the answer for healing, Lord. For unorthodox methods and remedies, Father, I just speak them to those who are waiting. Waiting by faith. Waiting patiently, Lord. May minds and hearts be open to other things, Lord. And then what you do best is you'll say it over and over and over and over again. And may these people have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to go do what you're telling them to do. I knew instantly, Lord, when I looked at that box of that spiced detox yogi tea on the grocery store shelf that you wanted me to drink that stuff with a crazy passion. Amen. Thank you. And it worked. Now you say, oh, well, you didn't get your, your instant miracle. Well, yes, I did. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm believing. I speak to disease in this room and say, you don't have any authority. I speak to disease and sickness and say, leave. My father has a remedy. Yes. And we celebrate tonight. We celebrate that which we can't see that will be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, we just continue to praise you for the, for the healing in the room that's flowing. Anybody, bow your head. Anybody in the room need a physical healing in their body? I believe it was... Thank you, Father. I, I believe that was the flow. Was already, Glenda's already speaking that over the body. There's a, there's a building up of the security, the faith, the knowing, that knowing in you, that knower. I don't know how to explain it. You just know it. Lord, these are believers. These are people that trust you. In Jesus' name, be healed. Satan, you have no right to torment them any longer. I, I curse you, Satan, out of this room, out of the bodies, out of everyone in this room. I curse you. You have no right, no authority. We take the authority in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, that healing is flowing. Supernatural healing coming from the heaven. Lord, you opened heaven. We see you, that you're bleeding down over us. The blood of Christ heals and sets us free. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. Father, we claim that. We decree that. We believe that. In Jesus' name. There's a... It's finished. Over 2,000 years ago. It's finished. Stand each day and proclaim it. Healing sometimes is a process. If you need a miracle, that's usually instant. God, I've, I've prayed for you. God's healing you. I don't, you didn't raise your hand for healing, but there's something in your life that needs healing. Lord, I thank you for the healer is here. Lord, I thank you that she's a woman of God that sits in your presence. And she walks with you. She talks to you. She loves you. Lord, I thank you that you're touching her 
line, a family line. I'm breaking off anything that's trying to come on our children, all the family, loved ones, whoever that is. Let her keep praying. The Lord's telling me to tell you that keep praying. There's a couple, there's one especially that you're bringing into the kingdom this year that's got a strong calling from God on their life. And, and they're running right now, so they cannot run the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> sick, sick the Holy Spirit on them. Right. <laughs> Keep doing it. You, you don't lose faith and be encouraged today. God heard your <laughs> prayers. He's got the angels coming. Just keep believing when you, you don't have to say anything to this person. Any other people in the room that have that, keep believing. This is the year that things are open up. Heaven's opening for us this year. I think the Lord showed me at the beginning when I was praying. Wait just a minute. We will get you on the set. What he showed me in the beginning when we started the music and I saw change. People were chained. And he said, if they would stand up, know that they've been in chains, they've been in bondage, stand up and just pull them apart. He says, I will take them off this night. So if you know that you've been in chains, you haven't been able to break free, just stand up, pull off your chains, and walk out differently. Well, that's a, anybody have some chains in their life? I got some. Cha I got really some chains in the back. I can bring them out here. We can. Lord, I'm going to pray. This is a word from God from this young lady, and she was seeing that. Lord, I, I agree with her. There's things in this room that's changed from the the evil one. It's almost like the chains are wrapped around the people inside. It's it's almost like they've had them so long that they become comfortable with them. So we, Lord, ask you to just go in and do supernatural surgery. Clip it here. Knock it off there. Cut, cut there, Lord. Let it just, just almost drain out. Evil spirit, you must leave in Jesus' name. The spirit of death, you must leave. You have no right on that person. Somebody in the room. Somebody. I come against that spirit of suicide. There's hope in the room. There's hope. Hope in the Lord. There's hope in the Lord if you'll just reach out. All those curses. That many of the people in the room, their family, had been spoken curses over in their generations past. Satan, you have no legal right any longer. These curses are null and void tonight in Jesus' name. All those word curses that were spoken over the people, over their lives, over their families, that they will never be anything. They're going to be everything that God's called them to be. Tonight is really about a calling, an authority. So we want to leave it with that, Lord. We want to speak authority in the calling of everybody in the room that has a calling, wants a calling. God's not going to make you walk in anything. I don't know if you have a, a calling in your life. You really feel God's call. I'm not, talking to, I'm not talking about being a minister. There's a calling to finances. People are called to be financiers so they can have the money. If you, every, you know, everybody ought to stand up. Everybody, I'm, I'm just going to say stand up in Jesus' name. If you can't stand up, we'll come pick you up. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the callings, the destinies, Lord. Lord, this night's been a little different, but it's been a authority difference. You're speaking authority tonight. Giving us examples through Fred's message. Great message, Father. Through the music. It's been a little different. Not as many prophetic words, but we'd rather have your word, Lord. Yes. Lord, we can speak to each other and give us encouragement. That's okay. But Lord, we thank you that you're delivering us. You're setting us free. You're breaking off bondages. You're doing the work. For your believers tonight, we're going to walk out of here free. There's freedom. No matter what's going on in your life, what, what your situation looks like. It doesn't matter. I know some people that are millionaires that are miserable, depressed, dr drink too much. But the Lord loves them too. 
Touch us tonight, Lord. Relieve us of this pressure. It's almost like I see we're all blown up real tight and, and, and God is just letting the air out. It's like a deep breath and you're saying, finally. And there's a rest and a peace that's settling down. I'm telling you, if you, can, if you can find the rest and the peace of God and stay there, wherever that is, wherever God goes with that, go with it. You'll walk in the destiny of God has for you. Amen. That's truth. You don't have to run after God's destiny. He's, he wants to show you what you're going to do. Amen. We got to make room for him. As friends, we got to make room for him. Lord, I thank you for tonight. Seal tonight. Seal tonight, Lord. Lord, let your spirit flow here. Even when people leave tonight, let the spirit of God be so saturated on them that they have dreams. They have visions. They can't sleep. They, they pray all night. They, they feel they're filled anew with the spirit of God. The power of God, the excitement of God, the fire of God is in them. Lord, why not, Lord? We're tired of just being, Lord. We want to go and, as James, the book of James says, we want to be a doer of the word. As Fred was even teaching tonight. Lord, we're ready. We're the forerunners, Lord. We're the people that hear and see what you're doing. Send us ahead, Lord, so we can take down the enemy, so we can... Help people to get behind us that they can walk through the openings we make for. That's what we are, Lord. We are equippers. We're the ones that go and line the people up. God said we're going into battle. Spiritual battle. Prayer battle. Get on your knees and battle for things in your family's life, but everybody's life. God will give you the words. He'll give you the visions of other countries. Lord, we pray for this transition, Lord, that's happening in our country. Lord, whatever, however you voted, whatever you think, Lord, we, we pray that your hand will keep everyone safe. And Lord, that the leadership, whoever that is, Lord, that they come to a, a, just a fresh anointing of your spirit. And we follow you in this country, Lord. I don't care if your name is an R or D, Lord, let, it, let us follow you. Anoint tomorrow. Let it be a time that your presence shows up. It's a transition. Let people be safe. But lead us into your glory over the next years, Father. Take out the people that need to be taken out. Put the people in that need to be put in. Thank you, Lord. I still feel God stirring. Anybody need a word today before we leave? I'm keeping you over time. No? Jerry? Jerry? Oh, Jesse. <laughs> Anybody got a word for Jesse? Yeah, I got a word for Jesse. Yeah, don't, don't leave. This might be your word. Jessica, the Lord showed me your heart when you came in. And um, it's very tender. It's very tender. And I also saw where uh, there's been times that maybe you've even been confused about the Father and about what's going on in your life and even what's happened to you. And I don't want to get too close for public consumption, but you've been hurt. And the Father would say that don't hold him in awe of that. That he loves you so, so very much. And he's made you the tenderness that you are. He's made it that way. Your heart is just so beautiful and the father would say rest in him trust in him for he loves you so very much and he has called you and given you specific I see you as a seer he's given you specific giftings and that's been part of the issue too you've seen things and you've operated in things and people have come against you my darling, rejection or acceptance from people has nothing to do with who you are in the Father. So the Father is saying, come still away from me. Come to me, my daughter. I want to heal you. I want to love on you. 
I want to just sing over you because I love you so much and I have plans for you. Don't give up. Keep walking in the way. Keep seeking me. Go into your secret place just like what's spoken tonight. Read my word because I have many giftings for you, many things to show you. Your days have just begun. You No, life has not passed you up, nor has your ministry. So walk in it in Jesus' name. I got one more word if I could. Is that all right? You, you Quick. Look, you look, no, you. For Mike. <clears throat> I believe, and it, it, this, is, this is really, it's almost, I was back there tonight going, woo, because what the Lord gave me when you walked in the door tonight was actually the scripture, Isaiah 30, 21, and I didn't know Brother Fred was going to have that. What, the first thing when I saw you tonight, the Lord said he's so pleased with you, and he is ordaining your steps. You know that, Mike. But the Father's calling you to a higher place, and I'd like to pray of that. He's calling you to a much higher place. You're smart, brother. And the Lord's saying, don't try to uh, figure it out. I also see in you Hebrews chapter 4, where it says, come rest in me. This whole message was for you tonight, because he's calling you a higher place. You have giftings. You're a seer. You can even prophesy. But what Lord is calling you to a deeper place. He really wants to take you to an elevation that you've not explored. So right now, if it's okay, guys, stretch your hands toward Mike. Father, Lord, we just lift him up. I want to lay hands on him right now. Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I know that I know in my knower you have called him to a much, much higher place. Mike, I see you as the deer panteth for water. So shall you search after the God and the Father, the living Father. I see you. I see you. I see a vision where you're you're seeking after the Word and you're reaching out and you're grabbing it, trying to climb that cliff and that mountain. And just as you get to the place to where you're going, oh, I'm desperate, Lord, I can't. He hits you with the very Word that you've been looking for and seeking you and filling you up. Fill him up, Father, so he can go to the next plateau and to the next level. And I see you as a little boy, when you hit that plateau, all of a sudden you're rolling over on your backside and you're just kicking your feet and your legs up in the air. Hallelujah, I have made it. The Lord says, not many, many are called, but not many come to this place. But my son, because of your sacrifice and because you are willing, and you will steal away and come to the secret place. You will experience this plateau. Come up, my son, for I have many, many people to share and bring into your life. There's influences that you have that other people don't have. These giftings I'm placed upon you to pour in these people's life. As I pour my love into you, you'll pour it out into other people. You will begin to be, you've been in a hiding place, but you're coming out. And it is through my love that flows yes. you and flows into others or how you will flow into others. You are my conduit and you are my vessel and you are going to walk in freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. You can sit down if you... Yeah, okay. Hold on a minute. Leave the mic. I mean. um, I just kept getting the word perspective the whole time that um, Brett was ministering. And it's almost like when we're little and we're, you know, we're small and we're holding our mama's hand or daddy's hand up here because we're so little. And it was almost like you were just looking up at these gigantic doors. Like, how do I go through that? Because there were just these huge, monstrous doors. And it was like God was saying, change your perspective. Quit looking up at those doors and look down at them because all you got to do is touch them and they're just going to fly open but it's your perspective not your position hey man you can just sit down there if you need to go just go quietly I want to pray for maybe one or two more people but you can sit down but if you need to leave just leave real quietly I want to pray for this visiting couple from Florida that did it's okay if I pray for you you stay right there. Thank you, Father. I just saw you. It's almost like you were in a cove. 
uh, your boat and you're in a boat in the cove and God's putting the sails up again. It's getting ready to flow out into the mainstream, the deeper water. Because he's had you hid in a cove in a, a safe place. But uh, because of what you do and who you are and where you've been in the past and what you know about God, he's going to let you flow out into a, a bigger stream now to, to help other people. Because you've both walked with God years and you've died. But God said, I'm going to use you in a greater way. Be open to change. This is just the beginning and some of the things that he told you years ago. Prophecies he gave you years ago. He's getting ready to open some doors. Trust him. Trust him for the money, for the situation, for everything you need. Trust him. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. Oh, you don't know how <laughs> that is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And the lady at the door over there, I want to... If you quit hugging her, Judy, I'd pray for her. <laughs> God said, I'm opening doors for you. It's time to, to go and fly and do the things that make you happy. Because depression and anxiety and fear have tried to put you down the way that people you think people look at you. But people see your heart. They know that you have a heart for other people and you love other people but that's been the problem that you over love people don't over love people but have boundaries God said I want to put some boundaries up for you because there's people that come around you that suck the life out of you that's it's not a warning it's a loving comment just so take care of yourself now feed yourself scripturally in every other way. And God said, I'll take care of you. Amen. 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 Anybody else got something? This a little bit? Yes. Uh, if it's not too long, yeah, because we're good. It comes right at the heart of what you Okay. Well, just look up there and grin at the camera. <laughs> when he talks about long ago, it was 1973. We got married, and about a year before that, God had spoken to me things about my own life. And something happened not long after that that, as he said, kind of sheltered us away from really what God had for us. And a good part of that was me letting other people define who I was in God. And it was, it was a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, that God began to speak to me, and he said, I'm waking you up to an understanding of who you are in me. And you can't get that from anybody else but him. Amen. And the minute you let other people tell you who or what you are in God, you lose it. You can never do that in your life. You've got to know who you are. And hang on to that because God will bring it to pass. Amen. That told you it wasn't long. <laughs> I just knew you could probably get up here and You're preach. Lucky, lucky. You, could, you could get up here and preach a little while, and we, we're coming to the end now. So we <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord, we've settled it. Well, I guess you settled it. <laughs> we receive it. In Jesus' name, thank you for this night.